Like, I think we're okay as long as we don't run into a sperm cell. Well, I've got the stat block for it here. So Why would you say that, bro? Why would you say that? <laughs> said that. See, actually, though, no, I respect Trouble for saying that. All right, so uh, that we've got he's... 24, which is Victor with uh, Orange Token on deck. So the oh, good yeah. news is that Trouble has said that, which means he's taking the wind out of Brickard's sails again, which I am happy for. <laughs> what CR is a sperm? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here, Victor, here's the yeah. situation. Uh, these two creatures, even though they're inches from your face, unless you're going to try to bite them, they functionally have full cover from you. As an action, you can doff your helmet. Or somebody else can use their action to doff your helmet. Or you can just smash your helmet with an attack. But if I have to use an action to smash them, I may as well just use the action to take it off. If that's it what I'm saying. If you take off your fishbowl attack. helmet, you now cannot attack. Because it's going to require an action on somebody's behalf to remove this helmet from your head. Uh, mechanics question. We've kind of been ruling that his psychic daggers don't hurt objects. Would they not go through his... Well, yeah, you can use a sonic dagger to break his helmet, if that's what you're asking. Uh, he's, he's asking, would the sonic dagger be able to basically go through the helmet like it wasn't there? Which I don't think is the case, but... I don't, you can, I don't think cover. you can use your daggers to attack something behind cover. There is a, uh, it's transparent, wait, 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 wait. but there's a full wall of glass between you and the worms. Since, since the daggers are summoned, can I summon them from my eyes? You have to throw them. They originate from your hands, is what I'm saying. They're like, they're, you, you make a dexterity, you apply dexterity to the attack rolls for them, yes? Uh, yeah. No, they're, I, I can't summon them from my eyeballs. You're not an X-Man. I guess you kind of are. That's exactly what Gambit does, isn't it? Does he throw stuff? Actually, this, has been, this has been Psylocke, and he's trying to go for Cyclops instead. So yeah, Victor, as an action, you can doff the helmet, or you can make an attack against the worms, but doing so will break the helmet. And you'd have to use something that could physically break the helmet. Yeah, so can I, can I take off the entire suit as an action, or just the helmet? Uh... Because it's, kind of, it's clasped around the top of the suit to your neck. I'm going to say it's going to take an action to undo those clasps and remove the helmet. And then okay. you can squeeze out of the suit. You'll still get a chance to attack them. I'd let you do both if you use your action to remove the helmet and then all of your movements to remove the suit. Uh, well, I don't think he's going anywhere. So, yeah, he wants to get out of the suit. <laughs> okay. So that's my action and my movement. Your, um, with your movement, you wriggle free from the suit. Okay, so for the bonus action, I will... Because they're on me, I can't, like, dash away from them or anything. They're, you're in their threat range, but you also you couldn't move if you wanted to. You're in that square. Yeah. yeah. And both, are they, like, like could I be moved away or, like, grapple, grappling me in a way? They're not grappling you, they just got inside of your suit. Their attack roll was to see if they could puncture your suit and get inside. Okay, so when I move away from the suit, do I move away from them? Well, you can't move away from your suit. You've used your movement already. Or, I mean, are they still in the suit, is the question. Are they still on me, or are they in the suit? They're in, they're in your suit, which is in your square. Okay. okay. You've not put any distance between you and them. Uh, so we will use our bonus action to Hunter's Mark, one of them. Okay. Has it been less than an hour since the last time you used that? Yeah, because my turret's still up. Yeah. Alright, who's next? Got orange marker with uh, Genie on deck. Oh, orange is off the side of the table. Sorry, Genie with Orson on deck. Genie, you were in here nice, all alone. You had room to put your feet up. Uh... <laughs> that's, that's not helpful. So Victor is screaming, going, oh my god, get him off, bring him off, burn him, burn him! I need, uh, this one to make me an intelligent saving throw. I think it's going to fail this pretty much automatically. Yeah, it's a seven. Okay. Uh. That is 3d6 plus a d8. Uh, 
uh, he takes 18 psychic damage, and uh, the next time, before the next, for the start of my next turn, uh, he has to subtract 1d4 from it, his next saving throw. So. And it divides as you inflict damage upon it. So now you have one big worm and two small worms. Well, no, brain damage causes them to split. Uh, Genie, moving your staying put. Uh, staying. Oh, uh, bonus action. Uh, let's see. Shoot this one. Does a fourteen hit? Fourteen does hit. I'm sorry, no, it does not hit. Okay. Well, shot goes wide then. Okay. Hits Orson in the feet. He's missing three toes now. Who's next? Got Orson with red token on deck. Orson is blind until somebody takes an action to wipe his helmet clean. Uh, Orson is going to... Blindly swing here. Okay, so he's rolling at disadvantage against the worm. Uh, that's a 22. That'll hit. 10 points. Okay, that is enough for that worm. Uh, second worm here, or did that already get broken? No, it's still here. Uh, okay, you you hit it from me. Yeah, it was invisible. Oh, sorry uh, second attack. Uh, Twenty five. That'll hit. I don't think it. I don't think it disadvantage works very well on Orson. Oh, uh, that's a nine to hit. Nine to hit. Nine, no, does not nine hit. to hit, not nine to hit, nine damage. Nine damage. The thing is, I mean, it was already bloodied, but now it's double bloodied. Okay. That's a 16 to hit. That'll hit. For the butt. For seven points. And that's enough for... Technically, that's only the second worm. I know it's confusing because they've been splitting in half. Is Orson moving or staying put? Orson is staying put. He can't see. All right. All right, we've got uh, worms with Eevee on deck. All right, worm time. Ready to get wormed? There's technically three worms in here, right? We can only we can only see. Uh, there. there you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> ah! Uh, neither of you are blind, right? No. And Correct. Genie, are you wearing your suit? Yes. Okay. Victor is not wearing his suit. Victor, I have a twenty yeah. to hit. Screw you. And a 9 to hit. Uh, the 9 misses. Genie, I have a 22 to hit. Uh, Yeah, that hits. Nothing I can do about that. This one pierces your suit at the leg and slithers up into your fishbowl helmet. Huh? Victor. Yeah? The big one attaches itself with its terrible pincher-like suction cup face directly Dude. over your eyeball. Oh my god. Oh my god. Violently at your face. I'm done. Good night. <laughs> Tapping out. Let's apply some damage to Victor. Are you going to blind a second character? You're going to need that restoration. I might if I get both of his eyes. <laughs> Victor. 13 points of necrotic damage. Oh boy. And as oh, the thing is I sucking blood out of Victor's face, you see its body is turning a reddish purple and it's bulging out from its mouth down the length of the, the slithering, disgusting worm. It's getting bigger and more bulbous. Victor is screaming. <laughs> Teleport it out. Uh, the other one missed Victor. So I'm actually going to put this one in this square here so I can keep track of who's what's, what's attached to who. And I don't have any worms left up here because Orson unfairly killed them all. Who's next? Uh, after this. worms, we've got Eevee with Edmonds on deck. What's the save to... Teleport these things with Vortex D Warp? DC 17 Constitution saving throw. Alright, make that save for this thing. Uh, for the worm on Victor's face? 
Yeah. Can you vortex warp something behind total cover, Genie? Is uh, the, it's, is the vi thing? it's visual, but like, it shouldn't have full cover against me. He's, no, he's but he's if you're trying to teleport it outside of the brown note, I mean. Oh, I need to be able to see where I'm. I mean, do you need to be able to see where I'm taking it? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm asking yeah. Treble because yeah, he's yeah. the one who's used the spell three hundred times. Three hundred times, target must. Uh, you magically twist space around another creature you can see within range. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw. The target can choose to fail, or the target is teleported to an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see. Okay, see, so yeah, you can teleport it out of the brown note. Where would you like to take it to? Uh. Where's a bonfire? <laughs> I guess I'll put it here next to the harpoon of air. Okay. And yeah, when the thing comes free of Victor's face, his eye is just bugging out of his head. And he's got these horrible purple puncture marks in a nice circular pattern all around it. Ew. His whole head is just throbbing. Three more. Left. For reference. Uh, Evie, moving or staying put? I can't really move anywhere. You can leave the brown note. Um, I should probably stay here and... Well, I guess they have more stuff to deal with out there. Uh, you can't be blinded in here. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh, I'll stay here for now. Bonus action to give the victor advantage if you'd like to kill this one. Okay. He most certainly would. Who's next? <laughs> Uh, let's see here. So after Evie, we've got Edmont with uh, Blood Cells on deck. Okay. Oh. Edmont, you are blind until an action is used to clean your helmet off of all the goop. Uh, hmm. Some would say that you've been unfairly gooped. I wouldn't say that, but I think some would. Blind attack against this cell. Okay. All of the cells are bloody, thanks to Econ. Yeah. That's a dirty 20 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, five points slashing damage. Okay. Second whip strike. Again, at disadvantage. That's an 18 to hit. Also hits. Uh, seven points slashing damage. Okay, it is not looking great. Uh, let's, uh, key point, Flurry of Blows. Again, at disadvantage. Okay. Uh, another 18 to hit. That'll hit. Uh, you're looking at six points bludgeoning damage. And that is enough. I can press the attack for one more hit against this other one on Edmont, or Ekon. Okay. At disadvantage again. I'm on fire this round. That's a 23 to hit. That'll hit. You just hit four times in a row while blind. I did at disadvantage. Crazy. <laughs> uh, seven points bludgeoning damage to that okay. one. And are you moving or staying put? I am good where I'm at. Gotta be happy with that round. Who's next? Yeah, dock myself a key point for that and I am done. Who's next? Uh, let's see. After that, we've got white blood cells with Ekon on deck. Okay. I need Orson and Edmont to make a constitution saving throw. DC sure. is 13. Pass. Orson, pass. Okay. You both were already blind. Ekon, I need you to make that same saving throw, please. DC 13, Con? Mm-hmm. Nope. Uh, okay, so Ekon, you are blinded as the thing releases mm -hmm. spores in your direction, coating your entire helmet. In addition, you feel the hardening cocoon around your body. Uh, so you are, what was it, incapacitated. So you can kind of float around uselessly, but you are not able to, you have no actions or reactions until somebody uses an action to free you. Okay. Uh, they cannot actually attack this turn. So who's next? Uh, Ekon, who can take no actions, I believe. 
Would you like to float somewhere? Uh, no, I think I'd get no way if I floated somewhere. So we got Victor with Gene. Um, Victor is going to horrifically stab this thing in front of him. Uh, probably a good idea. It deserves it, to be honest. <laughs> After what Victor's been through. So main attack is a 27. That'll hit. <clears throat> 34 points of sonic damage. Oh yeah, that's enough for the little worm. Poor little guy. And then we're going to offhand attack the one on Genie. Uh, it's behind total cover because she's wearing a helmet. So you can attack it, but you'd have to attack the helmet. It would any attack made against it would also damage your helmet. I don't want to damage your helmet. Uh, I can't bonus action until your helmet off, can I? Nope. Corey's in action. Well, sad face. Okay, then we will. Where's the door on the brown note? Just if you want to leave the brown note, just just say that you're leaving it and place yourself on one of the squares adjacent. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to do all the extra work of keeping track of where the actual door is. You just be aware you're not wearing your suit. I yes. know. That is also a problem. You do not want haunted blood in your face. You're just jealous of any blood. <laughs> Victor, Victor, will stay where he's at. Okay. Who's next? Got uh, Genie with uh, Orson on deck. All right, I need this guy to make me an int saving throw, DC seventeen. That's a big fail. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. Eleven points psychic damage, and that is enough. And like the thing just kind of bursts. In front of you, and it's just floating, spattered on the inside of your helmet now. Ew. Uh, that is a 21 to hit this. With your turret? Yeah. That hits. Okay, that's just 2d8. Turret swings around and shoots it for 16 points of force damage. It's quite a lot of damage. That thing is looking real haggard now. And that's the end of Genie's turn. All right, who's next? Uh, after Genie, we've got Orson with red token on deck. Orson is still blind, yes? Mm-hmm. Uh, Orson's going to attack this guy. All right. Oh, he's on his last flagellum. Well, we're going to throw that crit away. It does a 22 hit. Sure does. Nine points. And that is enough. Okay, uh, gonna go to the brown note here. Okay, and he is going to second hit. It's a nat one. Then the butt is a twenty-two to hit. That'll hit for six points of bludgeoning damage. All right, that one is also on its last flagellum now. Is he moving or staying put? He's going to stay put. Who is next? Uh, next up. Oh, yep, we've got Red Token with Eevee on deck. Uh, I have advantage to hit Orson because he's blind. You do. That is a crit. Oh, no. It's not a damage-dealing attack, but it's enough for... This is the big thick boy, remember, that just yeah. sucked half of Victor's face. Punctures into Orson's suit, slithers its way. Up his torso with his horrible lamprey teeth right in his face now. Ate it. That's all he can do. Who's next? Next up, we've got Evie with Edmont on deck. Wait, am I right about that? Did I get. That is right, yeah. Red token. Oh, red token. Okay. Red token? Yeah. So it's yeah, Evie. Yeah. Okay, uh, Evie's going to exit the brown note, 
through this okay. slot. And she's going to use her action to push Orson into it. Okay. And there's not really room out there, so bonus action. I will negate Edmund's blindness for his next attack. You have to be in the square next to him to do that. I I think he's she's using my bonus action with, with aid. Yeah, I'm gonna say Edmund, it's right here. That's only okay. You're, you're using action. your class feature. You're not wiping his helmet clean. I can't do that yeah. with a bonus action, can I? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm. We're on the same page now. Yes. Okay. That is the end of Evie's turn. All right. Who's next? Evie is canceling out my disadvantage. Edmont with white token on deck. Yeah, I need to keep this thing off my brother. So let's go ahead and crack this whip. At crack the guy right here. Well, maybe depends on if. Oh, look at that crit! Thanks, thanks, cousin. (laughs) Happy to help. I I I needed that, so I guess. Plus four is 11 points slashing damage to and that. That is uh, white blood cell. All that's left is the big worm in Orson's helmet. Can I squeeze into the... Uh... Well, I, well, I really can't do much of anything else. because I. You can, if you move back. into the brown note, it's going to count as squeezing for all four of you. Yeah, I've already taken an attack this turn, so I can't really help him get thing. But yeah, Edmont's going to move. Closer to his brother to help him get free of the of the of the platelet goop. Okay. Okay. Who's next? A white token with Ekon on deck. They're all dead. You guys killed all my cells. And Ekon's incapacitated still. Yep. So who's after Ekon? Uh, after Ekon, we back at the top with Victor. Okay. Thankfully, this is the one that Victor marked. So, <laughs> is it behind? Is it behind cover? It is. It's inside Orson's helmet, so you can attack it with a. Uh, but any anything you attack it with that deals damage would also dam. It would have to damage the helmet. Do we have spare helmets? No. We'd have to retreat, regroup at that after that point. And I'm guessing Mending can't fix the Shattered Helmet. I would say Mending could fix like a puncture or a crack in a helmet, but if you shatter it to pieces, that's probably beyond what Mending is appropriate for. If he shoves a flaming dagger through the helmet, is that something Mending can fix? I guess we'll find out, won't we? I hate this encounter so much. (laughs) Really? I think it's my favorite one so far. Thanks, Hel... Well, it's just... I don't know. I think my favorite so far was the bats. Uh, hey, Trouble, shut oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, okay. So, wow. You could use your action to take his helmet off, and then everybody could start slapping the swarm. So much so much salt about it. Holy crap. Yeah, but then I can't, oh, I can't use a bonus action to attack it if I take it off. Welcome to Action Economy. I know. A population you... I, Damn you and your helmets and the surviving inside. Oh <laughs> can we get PJ Salts in the chat? Just fuck you for not needing to breathe, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, Victor Victor will rip Orson's helmet off and tell Genie to burn the damn thing. Alright, so use your action to take his helmet off. Are you moving or staying put? Hang on, hang on, hang on. You could use you could hold your axe to attack after Genie takes his helmet off. You could do that. Okay, so question in that in that order. If I bonus action to fire dagger, does the vulnerability still count on a held action? If it's the first attack? Uh, I don't think so. I'd have to double check how I've written it. I'm gonna say no. I think I'm gonna say you have to use it on the same round. You'll still get the benefits of having fire as your damage type. But if you want to get that sweet, sweet vulnerability, you're going to have to attack this round. Yeah, I need that sweet, sweet vulnerability, otherwise it's not worth it. I'm going to make you break this guy's helmet if you want to get in there. So just taking the helmet off? Well, he's going to tell Genie to take the helmet off. 
and then he's going to hold his action so that when Genie takes a helmet off, then he's going to stab this thing with a silent like dagger. Okay. So the if Genie takes his helmet off, you're going to stab it. Yes. Okay. If Genie takes his helmet off, and he will tell her to take the helmet off. I guess we'll find out no, if she fine. listens. Who's next? <laughs> exactly. Well, now now I feel bad because I'm not going to listen. We have Genie with Orson. We have who? Genie with Orson on deck. Does Genie listen? Uh, yeah, I'll take the. Uh, I'll, I'll do it. I wasn't going to. That wasn't my plan. Okay. I'll take it off. Victor, you will get the benefits of sneak attack. Cause there's three allies. <laughs> well, two. You don't don't count as your own ally. Victor's is oh, a friend. Does it, is it twenty-two hit? Sure does. I like to think he doesn't count because he's his own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. True, really. Uh, thirty-six points of sonic damage. It's pretty good. Yeah, but it's not double. I don't think it would have mattered. I think it was gonna. It would split and either it way. It does indeed. As the helmet comes off and you slash out with a sonic dagger, and the thing splits in half. Although, this worm, having sucked, like, drank half of Victor's face, the two halves that result are a little more robust-looking than the previous ones you've split apart. Uh, Jeannie, moving or staying put? Uh, bonus action. Uh, so, wait, wait. The, the, the cannon just fires off at the wall. Okay. Is, yeah. is the shoot, one, plus a shooter cannon. Just shooting into this man's stomach lining at this point. Are we in his stomach? Does he have teeth in his stomach? What's Victor's oh, question? No. Is is the so the worm split in half, but is half of it still attached to Orson's face? Nothing's attached to Orson's face yet. It uses okay. attack to get up in there. Okay. Alright, mm -hmm. who's next? Orson. Alright, uh Yep. Orson? Got Orson with red token. Can Orson be the guy right here? If not, he's going to get I mean, his face he, sucked off. I mean, he's going to attack the one that's on his face. Okay. Well, uh, on him first. Uh, it's still crit. It's just poking up outside of his suit and right in front of his face. And he's not he's not blinded anymore because he doesn't have his helmet on. That's correct. Uh, that is 12 points of damage. Okay. That is not that quite enough to kill it. Okay. Second attack. It would have been if it hadn't drank part of Victor's face first. 11. Uh, 11. Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. 21 to hit. 21 will hit. For 10 points. And that is enough to get rid of the one on Orson. And the one on the floor gets the butt. Uh, that's a 29 to hit. That'll hit. That is 6 points of bludgeoning damage. All right. And is Orson moving or staying put? Uh, staying put. It's the last hurrah of my red worms now. Yeah. Victor. I have a 13 to hit. Well, that does not hit. As this last worm makes a dive for the side of your face, you move to the side, and it just crashes and coils up against the inside of the wall of the brown note. Who's next? Uh, sorry, where are we? Next up, we've got uh, Ed Evie? Yep. Evie, fix it. Uh, I, there's no room for me in the brown note. Okay. I will free Ekon, though. Okay. Use your action to pull Ekon free of the cocoon. Yep. He's still blinded? Uh, yes. Those are okay. two separate. You can't avoid being blinded. You can avoid being cocooned by that attack. Okay. So that's Evie, and who's next? Edmont with that on. Edmont, are you I, gonna... he, I, I make uh, Edmont able to see again. So you're going to wipe Ekon. off your helmet? The, I, yeah, I'm going to wipe off my brother's helmet. Akon's helmet? Okay. Yeah. And moving or staying put? I'm good here. Okay, right, so Akon, and that's inside there. Um, can I move the hammer through the... Through the uh, Please don't. Through the filament? Let Victor do it. Yeah, you can. <laughs> Please right. let Victor do it. I have my hammer today. It's a harpoon. A harpoon of air, air, air stabs at the worm. Okay. 
We you're, don't... Not gonna, you're not gonna live, Victor. Do it. It might live. It's an, it's an AC of uh, twenty-eight. Twenty-eight will hit. All right. And three D eight. Dealing twenty-three force damage. And that's enough. The worm falls slack, and it does not split again. Victor yells a curse at Echo. <laughs> Why you killed one? He wanted to kill the last one. Why? Just because it ain't part of your face? Yes. It's like that hey, was my uh, that was my favorite face. So Jeannie's got a hole in her suit. Orson's got a hole in his suit. Victor has a hole in his suit. Yes. Right. Yep. But they're, mending they're, can probably fix that. They're punctures down by down in the lower leg. Yeah, this is something you could fix with mending or a, like a sewing kit or something. I mean, I have weaver's tools. I would be able to fix it. I don't have a loom with me, but BB carries like a sewing kit. This would require a sewing kit, because you'd have to sew a patch onto, huh? onto the clothes. Or you could use a mending cantrip would also be appropriate here. Do we have mending? Yeah. Yeah, I can I... Okay. And we... Evie does not need to sew, which would take a while. So you take a few moments and patch up the suits where appropriate. All the helmets look like they're still intact. Victor's eyeball is still bulging out of his head unnaturally. We need to, like, put that back in. <laughs> yeah, do we need, to, like, a medicine check? I mean, it just looks like it's uh, swelling from being punctured and bitten at. He's not sustaining any future damage. Like it's not permanently damaged his good looks, right? Because that's all he's got going for him. <laughs> God, that, Damn. that yeah. happened to a character in a book I just read. He got wounded in a fight, and then he spends the next two books just moping about how he's ugly now because he has a scar. That's all he cares about. Women love scars. <laughs> all right, what's next? Just to the north, you have this valve uh, uh, where you can feel the unnatural warmth on the other side. We want to finish exploring this room now that we... Yeah, well, the whole reason we, we're here is because we're going through that way, so... Yeah. Okay. Victor mutteringly goes this, this direction. You come around the corner, and you see another large hill in the second half of the room with the budding pustules on top of it, none of which look like they're big enough to bother you anymore. And then at the end of the room... Is the next valve? Assume it's over here. Yep. Is it? Yeah. The okay. Cool. <laughs> Are these pustules still intact? Like they're gonna spawn more? No. Uh, no, they're not intact because two of them just broke off and came down after you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just make sure. You have angered the pustules. Yeah. <laughs> Victor sloops on through into a more or less quiet-looking tunnel. Has it been an hour since yet? Like, how, how close are we to being an hour? Since you've entered or since we started the session? Uh, since about the time we started the session. I'll say it's probably been a little over an hour because you guys spent... What spell did you spend casting 10 minutes earlier? 10 minutes spell. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get and you do kind of, in between encounters, you do kind of have to move slowly as you're maneuvering the brown note through the place. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, mar I'm just marking off a uh, spell slot so I can keep the turret going, that's all. Okay. Are we heading up this tunnel? Yeah. yeah. Do, uh, this is the chance. Do you think we need to switch turrets? I like the, I like having the ballista. Yeah, the Force Ballista is nice when it works. Oh, man, you know what? I forgot the Force Ballista actually pushes. I, That's cool. I very rarely... I just, I just never get to use it because the other one's so good. From this position, you can hear loud suctioning sounds from around the corner of this tunnel ahead of you. You don't feel an increased suction yet, but you can hear it, and you can almost... If you run your hand along the wall to the side of you, you can feel the vibrations in the muscle tissue getting stronger and stronger, all pulling away from you down this tunnel. I would like to go on record and say Victor is not walking on the floor <laughs> anymore. 
I mean, these little blood vessels are everywhere. More of these worms could pop out at any moment. I'm going to carefully proceed, waiting for the suction to get too strong. Okay. As you guys get up to the next valve up here, as you turn the corner and look down, the val most of the valves up to this point have been closed. Uh, and you had to physically open them. Not this one. Along with the rhythm of the movement of the dungeon, the valve opens inward, sucking in vast amounts of plasma, and then closing itself off. And this is just a natural pulsation of Zach Wheel's body. I think we found his part. I think we've seen this thing through the valve. That's a scary thought. You can see just a, a gigantic chamber on the other side. Okay, if this is his heart, then we need to be very conscientious of collateral damage beyond this point. I don't think Victor knows what a heart actually looks like. So you guys are slooping through? Yes. Yep. Looking into this gigantic chamber, off to your right, uh, there's a pathway that slopes down and away from you. Directly in front of you is a cliff. A good 30 or 40 foot drop. And as you stand, as you step in, you have to brace yourself against the pulsations of and movements of the fluid in here to avoid being swept up into the current. Uh, let's go slowly. Victor's taking point as you guys are moving the brown note down this slope. Mm -hmm. And it slopes yeah. all the way down to the floor. When you get down there to your right, you can see a high ledge. And looking into the center of the room is a gaping, horrible maw. Oh, okay. this is hard. Evie's over here. She is staying as far off away. I know what this thing, this thing is obviously something that eats people. Evie is not going near it. I've been eaten enough times. You know, Evie Ruby would go near it. I don't... I don't think I'm that's going to work. Alright, let's roll some initiative. Alright. Is this is purple on a... 20... Genie is on a 19. Where are you going? Going here. Okay. Well, guess what? Orson's here. Genie's here. So Orson is riding the barrel? Uh, yeah. Okay. For th That's mostly for... We'll just, like, it's mostly so move, making movement easier, but he's within five feet of the barrel. Is he standing next to the barrel, or is he riding on top of it? He is standing next to the barrel. Okay, so Ekon is standing next to the barrel. Edmont yep. and Victor are standing down on the ground, on top of this yep. giant blood vessel, which could turn into a worm at any second. Hey, Victor is yeah, on the ground. <laughs> Genie is inside of the barrel. Okay. Yes. Who's the top of the order? Uh, first up, we've got Evie with Edmont on deck. All right, do I see anything? Yeah, describe what you see. You see the gaping maw in the center of the room. You see a cliff along your right-hand wall. You see these large calcified protrusions coming up from the floor all around the place. And you feel the rhythmic suction into the center of the chamber. I think we should uh, go ahead and put the salt in the wound up there. Uh, Wait, can we get to that wound, or is that... that... You don't have to climb up the wall, because you can just kind of float up okay. to the top of the cliff next to you. But yeah, it is a good uh, 10 or 15 feet up from the base of the chamber. Okay, well, what kind of action is it to retrieve a salt? You just have to move into the brown note and say that you've okay. retrieved it. I've wouldn't. got a salt. Okay. Can I, can I make the suggestion right. that maybe we tie a safety rope to you before you go floating free in a room that's sucking stuff into a giant gaping maw of teeth? You know, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, I have a salt now. 
Um, as an action, I can tie a rope around myself and hand it to somebody. Sure. Hand it to somebody or fix it to the brown note? One of the two. Um, I'll fix it to the brown note because it's 50 feet. So it's not going to be any worse than my hose already is. The difference mechanically would be if you hand the rope off to somebody else and you need the help, you're at the mercy of their strength check. If you tie it off to the brown note and you need the help, you're at the mercy of the brown note uh, not taking so much physical damage that the part that you tie it to breaks. Okay. Mechanically, that's the difference. All right. Well, I guess I'll tie it to the brown note. Okay. Uh, I don't have to see anything else I can do right now. So that's the end of Evie's turn. You used all your movement? Um, I guess I could move closer. So you're going to start floating up that wall towards... Yeah, how much is this? How much movement is that? Ten feet to get to the top. Okay. From the base. I guess I'll stop here. When you Does do... Does anything emerge? For a split second, you see a beautiful woman over this lesion. And no sooner do you make yourself known that she drops back down and muscle tissue closes over the lesion on top completely sealing it off okay and i'm going to use a black go token to indicate a sealed lesion that's a sentence i never thought i would need this one just closed itself off that woman is here is that it for evie yep who's next after EV, we've got Edmont with Orson on deck. Uh, hmm. Edmont's going to float up and inspect it. Float up and inspect it? Yeah. Very similar, because you've seen a similar kind of valve try to suck your arm out of its socket earlier in this dungeon. So, you know, attacking it would be just like attacking a stone wall. Might need to, uh, might need to, uh, tickle an utricle or whatever you want to call it to get this thing to move again. Um, dodge. Dodge there. All right. Who's next? Yeah. After Edmont, we've got uh, Orson with Purple Token on deck. Orson, what do? Uh, I guess Orson's just going to move a little closer down and then dodge. Okay. And then it's Purple Token. I need yep. everyone mm. to make me a Strength saving throw. Strength saving throw. I'm going to use my intelligence for this one. Fair. Got an eight. I got a seven. Thirteen. Uh, Orson got a twenty-one. Eighteen. And I got a. So Victor and Ekon. Uh, I fail. And Unless, G a six will... Unless a six does it. Oh, Jeannie, you're not subject to this. Okay. Uh, but Victor and Ekon failed, yes? Yes. Yeah. Victor and Ekon, you are pulled 20 feet towards the maw. Uh, Genie, mm -hmm. I need a completely separate strength saving throw for a different reason for you. Okay. Do you want to just use the one I rolled, or...? <laughs> Make it, uh, this is against a different effect, so roll it again. Okay, uh, a first, 10. A 10? Yeah. Three points of bludgeoning damage. All right. As Did you go tumbling? Brown Note is also pulled five feet in the direction of the Maw. Okay. Which causes Genie to tumble downward and bang her head on the floor. Orson, got Evie, and points. Edmont, you managed to staunch yourself against the flow. Uh... This suction is much stronger than anything you've experienced so far. 
to the point where Ekon and Victor are just kind of freely dangling in middle space there. I guess I can erase some more of the room for you, though. You can see the second slope going up the other side of the wall over there. Uh, so right now, Ekon is 15 feet of rope on his hose to the note. If he gets pulled more than 30 feet away, his hose is going to snap. All right, who's next? Uh, after purple, we've got Genie with Victor on deck. Genie, you are inside the brown note, uh, technically laying prone for all that's worth. Right. Uh, Genie is going to. Oof. I have an idea. Uh oh. This might kill Zachriel, though. <laughs> But does Genie know that? I don't know what your idea is. I'm gonna stop this up with a web. The maw? Oh no. Yeah. Okay. Uh that's where the suction is going, right? Yeah, down into this cavernous maw. Okay, well the cavernous maw is being blocked by web spell now. Draw it out. What a great use of web. I mean, the web is porous. Like, fluid can travel through it. Yeah. The stuff can. That's true. Yeah. yeah. You, I, I'm assuming your goal is not to seal it off. Your goal is if Ekon gets sucked into it, he'll get trapped in the web. Well, my goal is to block the hole off. Okay. Well, you, you wouldn't, you couldn't do that with web. You could do it with, like, wall right. of ice or wall of stone or something. Right. Which I don't get for a while. The best you can do with a web is if Ekon gets sucked all the way in, he'll land in the web. I have wall of wind, but I don't know how that would work underwater or under plasma. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, web there. Okay. Safety net. Here you go. Okay. And uh, bone. Well, I, I don't really have a target. So. No bonus action for me. Okay. I guess, I'll use half, I guess I'll use half of my movement to stand up. So I'm not prone. Got Victor with uh, red token on deck. Victor. So if I disconnect from the hose, I get a minute plus con bonus. So it'd be what, 20 rounds? Uh, is it a minute plus minute. your constitution modifier? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, so it's a minute plus your con mod. Yes. Yeah, so a minute plus minutes. con bonus. You can't, you can't immediately drown if you have a penalty. Yeah, so that'd be two minutes, which is what, 20 rounds? Yes. Okay. Well... I was just ain't long enough. So we are going to If I teleport away from the hose, well it shouldn't break it, right? If you teleport away from the hose? Yeah. And do I need to disconnect those before I teleport? Uh well we've established that we if you teleport the suit teleports with you. So if you teleport out of the range of the hose, it will snap. But you'll still okay. have your suit on. Oh, uh, is it gonna take me a full action to disconnect the hose? The hoses are quick, really. If they snap, you're fine. Right. Okay. You, you yeah. can snap it without breaking it and having to fix it later, if that's the question. Uh, yeah. So, we are going to... I'm kind of assuming this purple thing is in the same room. That one over there. You can't see anything on the other side of the gaping maw right now. I was talking about this one. So, 20 feet gets me there... 30 would get me there. Right there, you're at the very edge of your hose. I'm counting six squares between the two. So if you want to move longer than that, you can snap the hose and keep going. Uh, yep, that's what we're going to do. So that that's my movement. What I want to do for a bonus action is I want to 
try and basically teleport to this purple thing, assuming it's in the same room, which I'm not sure about. I mean, you can see the cliff in the distance. Okay, yeah, so we're going to we're gonna throw a dagger over there as a bonus action to teleport. Let's see if I can actually make it, though. As long as it's within range of your dagger, what's the range? Uh, it's a D10 the times 10. Yeah, the teleport action is a little different. Oh, okay. So, sign off. Uh, 90 years. feet. So. Yeah, you can teleport up to the top of the ledge here. Well, and that's a big one. There, you get a little more... You can see down to the third slope coming in from the last direction. Does the lady appear? She does not, but the thing is completely sealed off. Sealed in the same way that the previous one was. She rotating around each round. That's what I was thinking. She was playing whack-a-mole. And also, you can no longer breathe. Well, that's okay. We got 20 rounds. <laughs> so who's keeping track of how many rounds Victor is not breathing? Let's, let's keep tick marks on the table here. I'd hope it's Victor. Uh, do we trust Victor with that job? Okay, here's one tick mark. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure if Victor wanted to cheat in his favor, his life wouldn't have gone the way it has. Metagaming. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> he would have found a, a better. He would have found a better That's family. Awful. There's one tick mark for you. All right. Listen, this table has been cursed by a bog witch. I don't think be. any. I don't think we've ever had. As many times I've tried to suffocate you fools, I've never had anybody actually in danger of. It takes a yeah, long time. It takes a, takes and even a long after time. that, of a it's... chance to do something like their, your party would. So yeah, Victor, you teleport yourself up to the top, and there's definitely a lesion under this solid muscle tissue. Right, Victor will inform people that there's a legion, and then for my action, we will. Now, if you shout to them, they won't hear you because you now have liquid medium oh, that... between you and them. Yeah, but it's telepathic is still up. Okay. I think it's been less than an hour since we did telepathic. Is that it for Victor? Uh, no, because we have our actual action. What is this real wee stuff? It takes 10 feet to get down the cliffs. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, want... it is. 10 feet to get I down. I if I want to try and throw a dagger into the maw. Oh, we just get caught in the web <laughs> at this point. So we're gonna we're gonna dash for the uh, for my action. All right, dash to where? Um, I think that's as far as I can get. Okay, from that position, you can see across the way onto the second cliff, and then off to your left, sloping upward, you see another valve. Presumably exiting the area. All right, who's next? Next up, we've got Red Token with Ekon on deck. I have to do some dice rolling. Just dropped my dice on the floor. But I was going to roll. This is... D4? No, blessedly, it's a D6. <laughs> Again, Victor is not standing on the ground. It's okay. My guys can slither. Four <laughs> and one for Ekon. Uh, Victor. Life is terrible. I don't have to roll to attack Victor. He has a disconnected hose I can slither through. Oh, no. Ekon. Mm -hmm. I have a 22 to hit. Uh, if it can be blinded, roll again at disadvantage. Will do. 